This is pre-algebra lesson 7-2, solving multiplied spent equations. Consecutive integers is a sequence of integers found by counting by ones from any integer. An example of consecutive integers would be like 14, 15, 16. They go in a row. They mean count by ones, start a specific number, go by ones consecutively for as many numbers as they tell you to do it. To find consecutive integers, you have to think a little bit more rationally. For example, let's take any three consecutive numbers. Let's take my 14, 15, and 16. We'll use those as an example. 14, 15, and 16. What is the difference between each one of these numbers? Well, 14 to 15 is 1. 15 to 16 is 1. So it is 1. If I didn't know the first number, if I didn't know I started with 14, what could I call my first number? Well, if you don't know something, we call it a variable. So we can choose any variable we want. I'll call it n. So my first number is going to be n. If I don't know my first number, but I know my next number is one higher than my first number, and my first number is n, then the next consecutive number would logically be one more than n, or n plus one. If I had a number that was after that, that number should be two more, because if I look at from 14 to 16 over here, if I go from 14 to 16, that's actually two numbers apart. So that my next number should be n plus 2, and so on and so forth. So you can find consecutive integers even if you don't know what your first integer is by using the simple rule that to go from one consecutive integer to the next consecutive integer, you add one digit. All right, let's take a look at some problems dealing with consecutive numbers. The sum of three consecutive integers is 96. We need to find these integers. Okay, so let's look at these. Um, if I want to find three consecutive integers equal 96, I don't know what my first one is. And I don't want to play the guess and check game because that's going to take way too long. So I'm simply going to let n equal my first integer. And remember, an integer is a positive or negative whole number. So if you get an answer to your problem that's not a whole number, you'll know you did something wrong. So my next consecutive integer would be n plus 1. That would be my second integer. And that would mean n plus 2 would be my third integer. Because if I started with 3, 4, and 5, 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, and 3 plus 2 would be 5. So if I start with n, n plus 1 is my second consecutive integer, n plus 2 is my third consecutive integer. I know that the sum of these numbers has to equal 96. That's what it says, the sum of them. So sum means add, so my first integer plus my second integer plus my third integer. And sometimes people like to put these in parentheses so they can see where the first integer is, where the second integer is, and where the third integer is. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. That is 96. So here is my equation. I have the equation. I've done the hardest part. Now all I have to do is solve. n plus n plus n is 3n. 1 plus 2 is 3. And that equals 96. So simplifying it, I have 3n plus 3 equals 96. Now I have a two-step equation just like what I was solving in the last lesson. So I simply subtract 3 from both sides. And I have 3n equals 93. Divide by 3, n will equal 31. So my first integer is 31. Okay, which means if I follow my pattern, n equals 31, n plus 1 would equal 32, and n plus 2 would be 31 plus 2, which would be 33. So my three numbers are 31, 32, and 33. So I'll write that in a complete sentence. The three integers are 31, 32, and 33. That's not too bad. Let's take a look at another one. Now we're going to find four consecutive integers. Four consecutive integers with a sum of 358. So four consecutive integers just means I need to go a little bit further when I do my de uh, defining of my variables. Okay, so we're looking for consecutive integers. So n equals my first integer, 
n plus 1 equals my second, n plus 2 would equal my third, and n plus 3 would equal my fourth. I keep going out until I get to what I want, and I wanted 4, so I have 4 consecutive integers. The sum of those, okay, because it says sum, means I need to add them together, so n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2 plus n plus 3 equals 358. That's 4 integers. Combine my like terms. I have an n here, an n here, an n here, and an n here, which makes 4 of them. So I have 4n. If I look underneath here, I have 1, a 2, and a 3. If I add those together, that equals 6. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. So 4n plus 6 equals 358. Subtract 6 from both sides of my equation. 6's cancel out, meaning 4n. 358 minus 6 is 352. Divide both sides by 4. And if I take 352 and I divide that by 4, I will get 88. So my first integer is 88. n equals 88. n plus 1 would be 88 plus 1, which is 89. n plus 2, which would be 88 plus 2, which is 90. And n plus 3, which would be 88 plus 3, which would be 91. So my four integers are 88, 89, 90, and 91. plus 89 plus 90 plus 91, they should equal 358. And if you do that, they do indeed equal 358. Now, let's look at a different problem. It says find two consecutive even integers. Now there's a difference between even integers and odd integers, so let's take a look at something for a moment. Before, when we had consecutive integers, Right, by consecutive integers, like 14, 15, and 16, there's always one number between them. Now let's just take even numbers. Let's take the numbers 2, 4, and 6. Those are consecutive even numbers. They come in a row, consecutively. The difference between 2 and 4 is 2. The difference between 4 and 6 is 2. So even numbers have two digits between them. So if I don't know what the first digit is, I can call it n, which means the next consecutive digit would be n plus 2, and then n plus 4, and then n plus 6. Okay. So consecutive integers have a difference of 1 between each integer. Consecutive even integers have a difference of 2 between each integer. So if I'm going to solve this problem, if it says find two consecutive even integers with a sum of 66, let n equal my first even. You have to start with an even number in order for this to work. You can't start with an odd number and add 2. If you start with an odd number and add 2, it will stay odd. So if n is my first even integer, then n plus 2 is my second even. I only need two of them because that's all it said. Find two consecutive even integers with a sum of 66. So n plus n plus 2 has to equal 66. 2n plus 2 equals 66. Now I have a basic two-step equation. Subtract 2. 2n equals 64. Divide by 2. n equals 32. So if n equals 32, n plus 2 would be 32 plus 2, which would be 34. And 32 plus 34 does indeed equal 66. So my two integers are 32 and 34. Now, 
now, let's look at odd numbers. 99% of the time, when I say we're going to have consecutive odd numbers, everybody can say, oh, I can name you consecutive odd numbers, like consecutive odd numbers, 3, 5, and 7. And I say, okay, if the first one is n, what's the second one? They go n plus 1, n plus 3, n plus 5. And I go, no, no, and more, no. Okay, let's take a look at this just like we looked at the last set. The difference between 3 and 5 is 2. The difference between 5 and 7 is 2. So, if we wanted to find our n term over here, we'd have to add 2. n plus 2 is what we need. If I don't have an n term to get to my next even or odd integer, I have to add 2. It's just like the even integers above here in this original this problem above here. The difference between each even integer is 2. The difference between each odd integer is also 2. If you start with an odd number, to keep it odd, you keep adding 2. So if I started with 13, to get to 15, I have to add 2. To get from 15 to 17, I still have to add 2. So as long as you start with an even number, to keep it even, you add 2. If you start with an odd number, to keep it odd, you also add 2. So you're either adding 1 to get consecutive integers, or you're adding 2 to get consecutive odd or consecutive even integers. So here I need three consecutive odd integers. So I'm going to let n equal my first odd, which means n plus 2 equals my second odd, and n plus 4 equals my third odd. And if I needed a fourth odd, I'd go in plus 6. If I needed a fifth odd, I'd go in plus 8, and so on and so forth. So if I need three consecutive odd integers with a sum of 117, so if I add them together, n plus n plus 2 plus n plus 4 equals 117. And I have n, n, and n, so that's 3n, 3n, 2 and 4 makes 6, so 3n plus 6 equals 117. To solve this equation, undo addition and subtraction first, and we'll subtract the 6. And we get 3n equals 111. And if we take 111 and divide it by 3, we're going to get n equals 37. So n plus 2, n equals 37. n plus 2 is 37 plus 2, which is 39. And n plus 4 is 37 plus 4, which is 41. So my three odd integers are 37, 39, and 41. If this was a problem I was asking for you to do in your textbook or from a worksheet or anything of that nature, I would need to see the following items. I would need to see all your variables defined. I would need to see your equation. Obviously, I'd need to see your work. And then I would need to see your answer in a complete sentence. So this problem alone would be worth one point for each variable, that's three points. One point for the equation, that's your fourth point. And three points for the answer, that's three more points. That's seven points for one problem, so be sure you are thorough and give me everything I asked for. Now, besides being able to solve word problems, you also need to solve problems that have more than two steps. We call these multi-step equations. Multi-step equations, you just need to solve very similarly to two-step equations. You just have to pay attention to things like Distributive property. If they have a parentheses and a number outside the parentheses, you need to use that distributive property before you undo any addition or subtraction. So use the distributive property if it's necessary. You want to combine any like terms, which means if you have two sets of numbers that you need to combine, kind of like we did with the word problems, because we were combining like terms. n plus n plus n became 3n. That was called combining like terms. 2 plus 1 became 3. And then you undo your addition or subtraction, and you undo your multiplication or division. So let's take a look at a couple of here. We're going to solve 2 parentheses 5x minus 3 equals 14. So, first thing I'm going to do 
distribute because I have a parenthesis there and I need to distribute. So I need to make sure I distribute this two all the way through. Make sure you pay attention to your sign. We've used the distributed property probably quite a bit since chapter two, so we need to be familiar with it. Two times five x is ten x. Two times negative three is negative six, and that equals fourteen. All you do is distribute the two times the five x and the two times the negative three. Sign goes with number. If it's more helpful for you to do this plus a negative that way so you don't forget your negative sign, I highly encourage you to do that. So 10x minus 6 equals 14. Add 6 to both sides. 10x will equal 20. Divide by 10. x equals 2. Not too hard. And of course, we can check it. We solved it and we plugged it into the original equation. 2 times 5 times 2 minus 3 is supposed to equal 14. 2 times 10 minus 3 is supposed to equal 14. 10 minus 3 is 7. 2 times 7 does indeed equal 14, so it checks. You can always check your equations, and it's highly encouraging to do so. Problem number 2 says 38 equals negative 3, parentheses, 4y plus 2 plus y. Again, we see a parenthesis, so we know we need to distribute. But be careful, we're distributing a negative 3 here. We need to do a negative 3 times the 4y and a negative 3 times the positive 2. So the 38 stays, because we're not doing anything with it yet. Negative 3 times positive 4y is negative 12y. Negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. And then we're going to add a y to that. Now, we have to combine like terms now before we add or subtract things. I have two like terms. I have a negative 12y and a positive y. They're on the same side of the equation. Here's my equation. That's the dividing line between my equation. They're both on the right side of the equation, so I need to just combine like terms here. So I have 38 will equal negative 12y plus y is negative 11y minus 6. Now I have an ordinary two-step equation. Add 6 to both sides of the equation, so I'll add 6 to the right side. You know, add 6 to the left side of the equation. These 6 is canceled out. 38 plus 6 is 44. 44 equals negative 11y. I need to solve for positive y, not negative y, so I'll divide by negative 11. 44 divided by a negative 11 is negative 4. So y equals negative 4. Simple several step equation. You just have to be very careful with your negative signs and don't get into the trap of looking at this positive y right here and thinking you have to, to subtract it from both sides of the equation because you don't. These are on the same side of the equation so you need to combine them first. Always be looking for like terms before you go to uh, to uh, and it is tracking from both sides. And that is all there is for solving uh, multi-step equations.